Hello everybody, welcome back to Inter Worldwide. It's match day time. It is time. It's a bogey fixture and I'm really, really looking forward to it, man. I'm still riding the Porto high, but with all highs with Inter come epic lows. And I promise it's not going to be all doom and gloom today, but I've invited this brother on here for a reason. What's going on, Kaz? How are you, Mattia? I'm doing great. It's always a huge pleasure to be here with you, my brother. So... Is, yeah, I'm doing nice. well. I am still still riding high from the Champions League night from that win. And I'm ready for that high to get squashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna keep it short, we're gonna keep it simple, and we're gonna we're gonna keep it accurate. Now, for some people that have been watching our most recent content, before we go to the comments, Mattia and I usually share the same sentiment when it comes to uh slippery fixtures, banana skin fixtures. If there's a reason for us to drop points, best believe we will find it easily. We won't need to dig very deep. And unfortunately, this is a fixture that has presented its fair share of banana skins. Um, and yeah, there's Sharmas in the chat. I can feel the negativity <laughs> jumping at me from my screen. But we're going to try. We're going to be smiling the whole time, Zeal. Okay, so there's going to be plenty of laughs in this one. So shout out to the channel members in the house. Massimo is here. Emiliano is here. How you going, Anthony? Happy Saturday uh, to me. And happy Friday to both of you, your Friday evening. Mattia, what is it like late Friday night for you, like 10 p.m. or something? Uh, oh, no, no. It's uh, 1 a.m. Oh, my days. That's yeah. right. I forget, that, I forget that you don't sleep at night. Yes, I sleep in the morning. That's right. I, I hate mornings, so I skip them. Yeah, I sleep during the morning and I work and, yeah, do other do, things. Do, 
Do most Serbians struggle to wake up in the morning? Is it a cultural thing or is it a Matija thing? Uh, it's it's a me thing, definitely. I'm a <laughs> night owl. I was always a night owl, so yeah. Fair. Mighty Mal's in the house. How are you going? I hope Lukaku builds on his real. confidence from the Porto game. Um, feels like I'm about to join the underworld. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good one, my two For all, <laughs> all the slang, slang that we give Lukaku, I've given him the big benefit of the doubt. He's in the thumbnail. I've called it his redemption. If he can get on this pitch, score a goal and have a good game, the confidence might just be back. Bologna's having a decent season. Thiago Motta's having a decent season. Headlines of him coaching PSG possibly next season. So he must be doing something right. Um, I think it'd be a great fit for PSG if he went back there because when he left Inter, I think a lot of people predicted that a player like him would have just, you know, stagnated and dropped. But he actually kept very, very consistent, high-quality form playing as a DM and an anchor for Paris Saint-Germain when he did leave Inter. So it would not surprise me whatsoever, Mattia, to see Thiago Motta um, go and coach Paris at some point. No, not at all. Um, it, I, I've seen some of our fans, you know, calling for him, those Inzaghi out fans, you know, uh, saying that he would do a better job. But I think it's too early. Uh, if he ever joins Inter, I think it's too early. So, yeah, I can see him going somewhere abroad first and then yeah. going yeah. maybe to us. As I said, he's doing a pretty good job um, at Bologna. I actually really didn't. I only, I only prepared like a few slides of just like three slides of stuff. So let's just check the ladder. Yeah, they're eighth, man. Eighth position. 23 games played, nine wins, nine losses, and five draws. Three wins in their last five. 32 competition points. And, you know, they were always going to be one of those teams like Torino and Udinese that occupied that meaty part of the mid-table. They really are the mid-table kings, Bologna. But... Kudos to them for having a good season. I'm hoping that because they are a side that knows that they're not going to get anywhere near relegation, because they're a side that must be looking at Atalanta still nine points ahead of them going, well, it's going to take a minor miracle, a major miracle for us to sneak into a European spot. Maybe Thiago Motta and his soft spot for Inter, they don't go hell for leather in this match, Mattia. I'm trying to stay as positive as possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last season... Uh... You know, Mikhailovic was officially coaching Bologna when they took away our Scudetto. So uh, it's, uh, I don't think that has any any re relevance, you know, here. So I wouldn't be uh, counting on that. <laughs> yeah, fair call, man. And Thiago Motta, you know, at this point of his career being linked to the likes of Paris, if that doesn't give you an extra boost up the arse to keep taking some scalps, what exactly. won't you know, coaches coaches in this position coaching Bologna one great thing to add to your CV if you haven't won trophies yet you want to start coaching on those big games that have talking points those games that put you on the front page of Gazzetta on the next day and I'll tell you what if Thiago Motta was to beat Inter that's one way to make sure that your CV is as fresh as possible 15 people with us right now on Inter World exactly. like the video subscribe if you are new and, um, yeah, drop a like as well for Matias' very impressive gold vest as well on top of his awesome jersey. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let's have a look at the Hey, right. bro, it's winter in Europe, if you forgot. Right, that must be cold in Serbia. Winter in Serbia? Come on. <laughs> Is it bad? But, you know, uh, I, I might take it off because, you know... Uh, it's getting hotter here. When I talk about Inter, I get excited and emotional. <laughs> so I might get, I might take it off later. Who knows? This guy. <laughs> uh, Bologna's form is up on the board. If you can see it, great. If it's a little too small, I'm sorry. I was literally yes. rushing, rushing at the bit uh, to get something up here on the way back home. So we start at the top where we smacked them 6-1. I remember we went 1-0 down and I was yeah. in my car and I was like this hitting the steering wheel. I'm like, these motherfuckers can't do the job. Went inside to put petrol. I came back and it was 2-1. I'm like, that's a little bit better. Thank you very much. I remember Fede Di Marco had his best game in an Inter jersey, I think, this season. Maybe in his... It was Di Marco's game. This guy absolutely killed that game completely. Um, Bologna went to recover well with a 3-0 win over Sassuolo. 
drop points against better sides than them, Roma and Atalanta. But when it came down to the mid-table and teams below them, Bologna have done the business quite well. Wins over Udinese, Bologna, Fiorentina and Sampdoria have kept them in eighth position this season. Well done to them. They had a surprise little slip against Monza a couple of weeks back, but I'm sure that that, that is sounds well familiar. Forgotten. Oh, yeah, it does sound very familiar. Yeah, not the only side there. Um, if you have a look at the left-hand side, you'll be able to see who's got their most minutes so far this season. No surprises there. Skorupsi has done a pretty good job in goalkeeper for them this season, I'd say. Um, no no reason for him to be unhappy. Um, Cambiasso has also done very well. Of course, he's owned by Juve. Uh, now, I think that he's going to be a good player for Juve when he goes back there. I, I like him. I think he's a very good talent. Um, Dominguez has played many minutes and has had a good season. Gary Medell is 35 years old and has played 1,300 minutes for Bologna this season. He's a guy that when he comes up against his former club, Inter, he's out for blood and he's out for points. There's absolutely no sympathy from Pitbull Medell. He's always going to give us problems. Um, other than that, you've got your regular Soriano, who's going to defi who's definitely going to, um, going to make sure that we struggle as well. Orsolini, I would like Arnautovic to be as far away from the starting 11 as possible, Ooh, which he too. should be. He should be because Musa Baro is probably going to get the nod from there. And you might see Sansone as well. So the only thing that I haven't looked up yet is the team news. So I'm actually not too sure who's going to be injured or whatnot. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up right now while Mattia runs you through his initial predictions and how he thinks the game's going to go. So the mic is yours, sir. Thank you very much. So um, I want to start with a little introduction about Inter this year. So uh, this year we started, as you all know, uh, winning against Napoli, uh, giving them the only defeat this season in the league. And after that, we slipped against Monza. So uh, and then came the Derby win. Uh, a huge win in the Supercoppa. And then we played at home against Empoli and then we lost. Now, uh, there is a second derby against Milan that we won again. And then we drew to Sampdoria. So there is a pattern here that <laughs> I think you guys have already started to notice. Now, we won against Porto in a very important and difficult game, which was great, amazing. But what is the next game? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> Bro, couldn't have said it any better myself. As I look up the team news, basically the only person uh, missing is Stefan Posh, um, who's played a lot of minutes for them um, in the defensive role this season. Uh, Georgios uh, Kiriakopoulos will take his place. The Greek with Kim, uh, Kambiaso switching to the other side. Arnautovic is about 70% likely to miss the game with his hip problem. He's very, very likely to miss the game. He might be on the bench. I don't think he will be. So you're probably going to see Soriano and Bardo lead the line with Orsolini just playing um, in behind the pocket, which is still, to me, is still threatening enough, Mattia, because we've looked shaky with players running at our defenders all season. You know, we can no longer... As good as Skrinia still is when he takes the pitch, we can no longer look at Milan Skrinia and expect nine out of 10, nine and a half out of 10, because I do think he's dropped off by about 10 to 15% since the whole drama with his contract and whatnot. He takes a little longer to grow into the game. He's definitely nowhere near as enthused and aggressive with his enthusiasm as he usually is. So I feel more dangerous with players running at Milan Skrinia now than I ever have before in his uh, life at Inter. Um, I said this in my post-match for Porto and I was talking to Christian Rivas about it. Bastoni this season, Mattia, is a proper Jekyll and Hyde even within the 90 minutes. It's not like he's having a good game and an average game and a bad game. The guy's having a great period for 20 minutes, a rusty 10 minutes. Mistake, best pass of the season. Bad pass back, bad slip. Incredible transition to the left-hand side of a wing-back overlapping the attacking play to get into a position to deliver a great cross, which he does well. If Bastoni can be on point the whole game, he'll probably have the best game in the back three. I feel very confident that Acerbi will continue to play well. So as long as we can keep Bologna at bay and fatigue them and stay in front, we should be able to win this game. Now, 
let's yeah you go you take it away before i start to go into the other side of how i feel <laughs> okay so yeah i i agree uh, with you uh, about bastoni he in that regard he uh, reminds me of barella a lot mm. where they can go up and down during a game so many times and we can see many different uh, sides of them so you, you're definitely right about that uh and i will just uh, add another little tidbit uh i think acerbi has been our most reliable uh, defender this season which is not something i expected to ever say <laughs> you know and yeah um i definitely agree with that we should be uh when i look at the, our schedule you know uh, we have bologna we have lecce we have spezia before porto so it's on paper you know it's an easy period it's yeah. something we just should... like just just like monza empoli and sampdoria right yes exactly <laughs> exactly so it's we are going to we have to accept we're gonna drop points so <laughs> we have to accept that right now so it's gonna happen and the most logical uh place where it's gonna happen is this you know it is after a big game after a big win you know maybe the lads are a bit tired mentally emotionally i don't know and they feel like a bit exhausted after the champions league and going away to bologna is not easy um and i still have nightmares about last year and the away game against bologna you know we smacked them 6-1 i think it was the same as yeah. last season at home but then what happened away so yeah uh i definitely Question. believe that this is gonna be a game where we drop points lecce do we host lecce or do we go to lecce i'm not i'm not too sure we uh, we host thank okay see like on paper lecce is the, mo the most the most difficult one for me just because of their style of play and, and their aggression this season big ups lecce man they are having a fantastic season in context but if it's at home we're a different beast we should beat them at home and we should go to spezia and win this one on the other hand i wasn't prepared to come on here and guarantee dropped points but as soon as you said it I'm almost convinced now uh, completely. So the starting lineup that you see up on the screen, of course, bearing in mind the team news that I just said, uh, right back posh. Yeah. Um, I'm getting out. hot. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Cambiaso will play on the right-hand side. Kiriakopoulos is going to come in on the left. Uh, Dominguez will anchor with Ferguson just in front of a midfield three. Orsolini and Soriano will play the pockets behind Musa Baro. A threatening attack with a stable midfield, not the best defense, not the most well-known defense. We should be able to score. This is a great game for Romelu Lukaku to keep doing what he is doing. So let him keep doing what he is doing. I think that he should start. If he's fit enough, he should start. If he isn't starting the game, I'm just going to make the prediction that he's still not at 100% fitness. And this is where I don't want to hear the Jekyll slander. Like in the last stream, I said to, said to the people, I'm like, if we had options, I'm sure Simone Inzaghi would use options. But we don't have options. We have zero options, man. So it's going to have to be Jekyll and starting if, if um, what's it called, if Lukaku's not fit. So before we go into our lineup, um, what are you feeling and how would you line up, Mattia, if you were in charge and you had the players with fitness at your disposal? Big up to the footy judge, Mo, our friend Mo. Yes, we should splash Bologna. And no, it's not negative. It's very realistic, bro. It's, <laughs> it's realistic, we have had, brother Mo. It's very realistic, bro. We have, we have not had 55 days yet in 2023. We are on day 55 of the year and we have dropped points to Monza, Empoli and Sampdoria. Definitely not negative. Definitely more realistic, bro. How are you going to line up, Mattia? Definitely big up to Mo and thank you for your live streams. They're awesome. So, They're the best thing since sliced bread. Yes, yes, I I love it. So yeah, um, we all said like you mentioned. Oh, we need to start uh, Big Rom. We need to start Brozo. But are they ready? They've been injured for like ninety percent of the season or even more. So. You know, uh, sh should we 
uh, rotate now after a difficult Champions League game? I think we should. I think we should rotate. I think we should give, you know, uh, does anybody know who Aslani is maybe? Has anyone heard about that guy? I don't know. Have you heard about that guy? I've heard of him. I know he exists. <laughs> There's a rumor going around that he exists, but I really don't know. To I've got to say, like, despite putting themselves on a pedestal, Sky Italia get their predicted lineups wrong more than almost any other outlet. So they're, they're, more, they're more about the graphic than they are about the accuracy. And you can almost guarantee that Brozovic doesn't start this game. I, I think that Simone Inzaghi is very much in Hendrik Mkhitaryan's corner and for good reasons as well. What do you guys think in the chat and what do you think, Matias? So, uh, do you think that Brozovic should continue to start from the bench until we know for sure he's ready to put in 110%? Because, bro, it's not like we've got a seven-point gap from second to third. It's not like we've got a six-point gap, man. We're still at a point where we can't afford to drop points. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, however, I think this opposition, these next three games that I mentioned, they you know, we should be able to rotate against them, you know. And one thing, you know, we all know uh, Chalkanoglu is more than, <laughs> yeah, is more than capable of, you know, taking that register role. But what worries me is Mikitarian. Yes, he's been great, but the guy has been playing 90 minutes and 90 minutes and 90 minutes. And... I'm just waiting for his serious injury, you know, so that worries me, you know, overplaying him, you know, and we have to consider his age as well. So I, I'm just scared that he's going to get murdered like Jekyll last season. So that, yeah. that's the, the main worry for me. Mm, fair enough. Uh, let, I'm going to talk a little bit more about our lineup and then we're going to move into a very, very accurate prediction of what Mattia and I think and Hopefully we are wrong. Um, if we are right, we are going to introduce a new segment on the channel next week. It is of my hope that I never need to make a thumbnail for this segment. I don't even want the segment to ever come around. If we never do a video on it again for the season, it'll be considered great. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I don't think it's possible, but yeah, yeah. I, would, I would sign it right now if we never I have would. to do it. I would too. Um, when I look at this lineup, I think it's more than enough to beat Bologna. I think that Dumfries will start because he did not start during the Champions League. Um, I would have started him for the Champions League, but hey, all is well that ends well. And I will never complain when I see Matteo Damian in this lineup, as simple as that. I never thought we'd be at a point where starting Robin Gossens over Di Marco would give me anxiety. And that's the only way I can put it. It would make me anxious and stressed. So Di Marco, as long as he's fit, he has to play. He has to start because he, he's just so key for our attack. He's so key for distribution reasons. And he just bleeds it left, right and center. So does Nico. Nico just needs to work on his temper, man. He needs to work on his frustration. It was really good to see him and Lukaku sort of, you know, hug it out. As, as I knew that they would never stay cranky at each oh, other for too, for too long, man. They know each other way too well. Um, oh, bro, how good was Onana against Porto? Amazing. How good, wa yeah. how good yeah. was Onana against Porto? Yeah. And I definitely think he didn't need that rest against Udinese, but yeah, let's not go into that. I think I, I read, I completely slipped my mind that Handanovic might have politely asked Onana and Inzaghi together, this will be the last time I get to play Udinese, so can I just please start this game? Because it is my it's his first club in Italy, wasn't it? Yeah, but we're not a charity, bro. <laughs> I know we're not, but we act like it. Remember, no, I'm glad that you said that because remember, fuck it. Whoops, sorry for swearing. Remember under Spalletti where we had that beautiful jersey and we had Rafinha and Cancelo and we could have won on match day 37 to qualify for the Champions League and apparently it was bring your kid to work day and we lined up on the pitch, everyone with their bloody kids and the stupid toys that came with it and we got ransacked in that game i was furious after that game i'm like bro you have that. a chance to reach your objectives for the first time in a decade and you decide to act like what did you call it matia yeah like it's a, it's, like a charity case like bro. a charity ball yeah 
like it was like a charity ball before the game like you can do it after the game if you want yeah exactly right well Anyways, anyway so th- uh, yeah, yeah on. one thing i would change here i would put the slani instead of brozo i would give him a bit more rest and i'm satisfied with everything else the way that Hakan has played in that Brozovic role, I think that he could really help Aslani by starting a little bit further up the pitch for him. You'd feel very, very well covered um, in an essence where Aslani is carrying the ball forward or in an essence where maybe Aslani gets himself into a good pocket off the ball. Uh, I think that you could see some really good tactical adaptation from Hakan in midfield on the transition, which would leave me with a lot of confidence. You know, if, if you take Di Marco out of the argument and now that, you know, that Rom is picking up a bit of form. The Jekyll dust is starting to fade from the first half of the season, which is what you want. You don't want to be sitting here every week going, Eden Jekyll's the best. He scored another goal. You don't want that, guys. We don't want to be in a position where Eden Jekyll is saving us with points. So my, my big point is that with DiMarco, take him out of the conversation. Hakan Chananolu is our best player this season, bar none. I think bar DiMarco. And I just... I personally cannot believe how good he has been, Mattia, man. Yeah, but I would add the Cherby to that list. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's another thing I hope that this lineup is wrong about. I would rather see Devray on the bench and a Cherby in the starting lineup if he's fit enough. Yeah, but you know, I you need to rotate. Yeah. He he is also up there with age, and you know, we will see, but yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand. All right, let's do the fun part, the real yes. fun part. And it has to be accurate. The, the rule of told you, bro, can't be we're going to drop points. It can't be we're going to draw the game. You have to say a couple of things that sort of come to fruition. So I'm going to go 1-1, very slow. Another game where our midfield passing is not working like to the point where you know the passes are too far in front of the attackers or they're cut out or intercepted too easily i think this could be a game where we will only see inter start playing well after minute 65 when the what's it called when the subs subs come Mm -hmm. in um so what i'll do is i'll let matia uh go first and give his accurate prediction and as long as he hits two things right which he probably will and i will and we might have a new video for you guys next week. Yeah. And then I'll send you off, man. I see I see us uh, struggling a lot. I see us uh, missing a lot of chances. I see them scoring uh, from the first chance they get. And I see us uh, losing in a similar fashion as to last year. I see maybe 2-1 for Bologna in a very, very sludgy very uh difficult match where we lose uh nerves i see yellows a lot of yellow cards for us um i see missing tons of chances and i see uh, losing i see us missing i see us missing some really good chances early like really early, like first seven to 10 minutes early, the sort of chances that you miss that go, oh, well, this game's going to end as a draw now. We've missed the chances for sure. So <laughs> that's what I sort of think. Victor says that it's going to be a 2-3 to Inter, but I'm going to have to agree with Mattia on almost everything, except it's not going to be a loss. It's it's going to be a draw. It's going to be the famous 1-1 that always pays $9 on the betting outlets. <laughs> And I'm willing to collect my nine to one odds as I seem to do at least once a month at the moment. So, Mattia, I know you've got some stuff to do, so I'm going to send you off yes. now. Thank you so I much for joining to. me, brother. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you all guys in the chat. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not. Thank you for watching us. And yeah, hopefully we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we're so, wrong and we don't and we don't need to link up next week. That would be great. Yes, I don't want to see I, your face. I hope so. So Fort Center, <laughs> Fort Center Worldwide. Ciao, guys. Ciao, bro. Big up. Thank you to Mattia, such a good friend of the channel. Um, yeah, mighty bad. Like, that's why I like getting him on here, bro. Like, it's just too, too realistic. And I hope that I'm wrong, man. As I've said before, there's two things in the world that I want to be wrong about my poor pessimism when it comes to Inter and my crazy conspiracy theories that don't seem as crazy or conspiratorial in the modern age. Easy draw. Inter never fails to ruin my weekend. Yep. Oh, bro. Nix Knox. This game is at peak shit Inter performance time. 
Very rarely do we get the early Sunday night kickoff, which is a 10.30 p.m. or a 9.30 p.m. Over the last three years, I have seen us bomb these games against Sampdoria, against Atalanta. The last time we had it, we did beat them in Bergamo. I think it was 3-2 or 3-1. I forget. I think it was actually 3-2. Um, we beat them in Bergamo. But that's the first early game that I've seen us do well. There was one against Parma. That was a banana skin about three years ago. I think there was one against Torino as well. This Sunday night kickoff where I need to make a decision whether or not to sacrifice an extra two hours sleep or not never works out well. So I'm going to try and have a really fatiguing Sunday, man. I'm going to do like two, three workouts. I might even have a couple of straight whiskeys at night just so I can hit the hay and just sleep through it, man. It'd be really good if we can get the 3-0 three, three away to Bologna, Victor. Wow, that would be something else. That would be something else, man. All right, that's pretty much where I'm going to end it because it is almost midday on Saturday and I want to have a really fun, relaxing weekend with the misses, with the Vincenzo. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. Like the video, subscribe if you are new. And if I don't need to do a video with Mattia next week, it would be great. I would love to get three points away to Bologna because three points away here just might mean three points at home against Lecce which just might mean three points away to Spezia. This is where momentum, this, this little chunk of the season now, this match day up until like match day 30, 31, this is where the trains are, are hard to stop. If you can get a roll on this time of the season while other teams are battered, bruised, fatigued, in and out of European competition, this is where you want your momentum. Let's build some momentum. Thanks for stopping in, Frankie. He says 0-0. Zero, zero. Nick Knox says that 4-1 to Atalanta. Bro, I was actually on the phone to Bruno, I think, at the time, and they scored first, and we just hung up. We just I couldn't even talk anymore, man. Hunter saved us. It was the first and last early game you woke up for. Yeah, it should have been 8-1. That was the game where it, we got a real cheap penalty at the start of the second half. Icardi scores it to make 1-1, and then it was 2-1 within five minutes after that. Should have been 8-1, I remember. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Anthony Forza Inter, Forza Inter Worldwide. Hopefully, we get three points against Bologna. I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.